How cool is that? Someone actually made an entire plugin for Cave Engine using Cave Engine's uh, built-in development tools to actually allow pet piping into the engine. So what you're seeing here is uh, a video that was show was released on my Discord. I actually asked for permission before recording this video here from Drop Your Weapons, and he is actually creating a plugin for Cave to allow pet fighting using, I believe it's recast. Uh, so you can see here in his early screenshot here in, uh, in images that he even have like the pet fighting mesh created. And I remember that he was talking about like having a lot of different AI agents, uh, all calculating, you can see here's 132 uh, agents on his potato build, which is very nice. And what is interesting about this is that Cave actually doesn't support this. He actually wrote a plugin uh, on to, to make this possible uh, using the engine's built-in API. So this is very interesting and I want to make this video just to showcase a little bit uh, how we can get started creating plugins like that, how this works in Cave, because many people ask me, is it possible to extend the engine? How does it work? So uh, I will show you really quick here that it is possible and it is very easy to do something like that. Uh, uh, this, this user, oops, let me actually remove here, uh, is actually extending the engine using an external Python library, which is, I believe, recast. Um, and it is, oh, it's actually recast, py recast detour. Uh, that he is using to do this, which is very interesting. I, I am planning to add uh, navigation mesh into Cave in the future, uh, but you can see it is very easy. This is the development, this is the progress that he had. So I'm actually moving backwards here in time, but it is very interesting to see that it is possible to do this. So let's jump into Cave and create a new project real quick here so we can explore this a little bit more. But before we move on, I just want to quickly remember you that Cave Engine is currently on sale and it is not 10, not 20, but 50% off. So this is literally the best time in the world for you to get the engine. The, the, the sale reason is due to the Black Friday. And I decided to extend this into the entire month of November, which is very nice for you to get the engine super cheap. You don't have to pay royalties. You have the lifetime access. You have updates included. You can chat here in this Discord server and develop your games. Remember, Cave Engine is one of the simplest, easiest, and fastest game engines that you can find. And it is script going Python, which is very nice. And as a proof of concept, let me actually create a new project here just for this video. You can see this is how quickly we open the engine. Uh, I would love to open a real engine and show you how slow it will be. But well, here it is. So let's go ahead and create a new project here just for testing purpose. Uh, Cave Engine comes with some default projects that you can uh, get started. Uh, and you can even click here in the advanced mode to have a bunch of extra settings here to create your new project much more um, faster and effectively. So let's, let's actually create, uh, I'll actually put this my game and I'll click here to create a new project. This is also how easy Cave Engine create, creates a new project and loads it. So that's it, I can save. And just to show how fast everything here is in Cave, this is how fast you can close the project and open it again, how fast you can play the game and how fast you can quit the game. So that's Cave, that's the power of the engine and it is Crypt Boy in Python, which is very good. So my goal here is not to showcase the engine itself, uh, but I always like to show how fast everything here is because it's uh, very different from every other engine here. Uh, but the goal is to show how easy you can extend the engine because Cave Engine, um, it is written in C++, but it is not source available. It is not so open source or anything like that. So we don't have the access to the source code, but you're not meant to have the access to the source code because the goal here is to make everything very easy for you to write your code if either being like your current uh, game logic code so cave engine comes with a player toolkit uh, script you can see here i can very easily ed edit the python code here in the engine itself this is all python doesn't doesn't need compilation or anything like that super simple but it is also meant for you to extend the editor itself with extra functionalities and i'm not going to create something fancy here because it's not the point of this video but i want to show you how easy it is to create a new plugin just like uh this user here from our discord it is doing uh, drop 
uh, your weapons. It is He's creating a very nice system here for cave and this is nice because it is using um, probably the engine API to extend the, the editor and also at the same time some Python code, some Python components to allow the logic to run, at least I'm assuming he's doing that. So everything you need to do to create a new plugin in cave is right click here in the content browser new asset and here you can click here to create a new editor tab and cave engine comes with some documentations here on the flight for you to understand everything that's going on which is very nice very useful so let's click here to create a new editor tab that's literally it so i can click here to edit the editor tab or i can double click it uh, you can see that i do have my python script over here very simple stuff as well um and it even comes with some examples here on how to get started. So it is explaining how to run the tools, which is just simply click here, editor tool, register the book tab, and I can click here. Uh, by the way, I can rename this. It is example tab. I can rename it to something else. But if I simply click here and register, you can see that I do have a new tab here on my, uh, on my system. I can dock this tab just like any other tabs here. Very simple stuff. Let's dock it here maybe um or leave it undocked it's fine too uh, and you can see that i do have the default stuff here that we define the default behavior you can see that i do have a simple text uh, a separator here then another text a counter and a button this counter is a variable that i'm initializing here so this is nice and you can see that i do have the counter i can change the number i can click a button just to show you how easy it is to do stuff uh, so this is literally the easiest possible uh, plugin that you can write for, for the engine. Let me actually dock it over here now. Uh, but let's actually extend this a little bit more, okay? So the very first thing that I would like to do is to make this button a little bit better, just like this one here. Uh, I can actually rename this button to button dark. And I'll register this plugin again. And you can see that now the button is much better. I can actually uh, create a header. default stuff i can call it default stuff i will actually indent this part here and if i register this again this will actually be part of a header so this is very easy for you to extend minimize and maximize your stuff and you can see that it is working uh, and there's a bunch more stuff in the ui here that you can use and extend uh, but let me actually show you how you can easily uh, interact with objects so let's say that i have here in the engine a mesh and maybe i want to create a very simple plugin to get the selected uh, the active entity here, which is the, the one that I'm selecting, and maybe reset the transform, maybe reset the scale or something like that. So we, we can do this. Oops, I actually typed here. So let's actually get, I believe it's the active entity. And if ant, um, I will actually UI text entity plus ant name so if there's an entity selected i will actually display the name otherwise i just do ui the text select an entity and i'll actually uh, add a separator here just to separate the default stuff from this this is by the way the sample stuff actually uh, let me register this tab again. So you can see here that I do have entity mesh. And if I select known, uh, I can see select an entity. So there's nothing here. So with this in mind, uh, you, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff because the Python API here is the same for the scripting API and actually for the actual engine API. So uh, I can use the same, the exact same API here to extend. For example, if there's an entity selected, let's actually create a button here. If UI button dark, um, reset, transform. Actually, pass this because, of course, we need to transform to reset it. And actually, 
I would just make sure that we only reset the transform if there is a transform, because in case an entity cannot ha have a transform, if I want, I can simply select this entity and delete the transform here. Of course, it will mess things up. Let me actually do this, uh, but I can do it if I want. Let me actually delete. You can see that the entity disappear is actually weird here. Um, let me actually go ahead and add it again. So now we can easily again move it. But anyways, so if there is a transform, we will reset the transform. And for this video, I'll actually not reset the transform. I'll just set the scale to one. So this will do the trick. Let's actually do 1.1.1. So click here, I'll register the example tab. You can see if I don't select a uh, an entity, there's nothing here going on, but if I click here to select an entity and click to reset to transform, this scale is now set to 1.0, which is very nice. Uh, alternatively, I can write other stuff here in the code, for example, UI button dark, reset all scales. And what this button will do is I can actually get the current scene um, in the like that is active here in the engine and I can do for ant in scene dot get I believe it's get all or again entities by the way we do have IntelliSense if you open the script in Visual Studio Code uh, we don't have IntelliSense here embedded in the engine yet uh, but if you literally click here file open project in Explorer and then open the folder in Visual Studio Code, you have IntelliSense, by the way, so this will help a lot. Uh, let me actually get the transform. And if transform, of course, if I do have a transform, I will actually do trans.set scale to 1.0. I believe that this will potentially mess my scene. Of course, this will definitely mess my scene. But again, this is just for an example. So actually, uh, completely destroy this thing here. Um, let me actually reset this transform here. Let's create some other stuff. And I'll actually try to register this to again. So you can see reset all scales. And if I click, hopefully, oh, there's an error here. Let me look in the console where where is my error? Oh, <laughs> I actually typed this by accident. Okay, not a problem. Now you can see I clicked and all the transforms, all the objects got resetted, which is super weird. Let me actually reload the components to reset some of them. Uh, but maybe this is what you want. You want to reset all the transforms of all the entities in the scene. You can do it. Uh, it's up to you. So this is just, again, a simple example. Let me actually reset the position as well. Set position to 000. Good. Editor tool. I'll register again. And if I reset, now it's even weirder because every object now uh, lies in the same position. But again, this is this may be what you want. I don't know. This is the plugin. This is like Cave Engine's responsibility. It's just to allow you to do this. And we are actually writing code here. So you can see how, we, how this thing goes. And you can see how you can get the engine and extend the engine to do whatever you want. Uh, this is a simple use case because, again, the goal of this video is not to show you how to do anything advanced because the advanced stuff is up to you, is up to your creativity, just like creating games itself. Uh, but it's very nice to see that people are using this to create advanced stuff like navigation mesh. By the way, uh, if you look into Cave Engine's API, you can actually add the bug lines and all sorts of good stuff here to make sure that you can have a better uh, plugin, a better integration, which is super nice. By the way, this is not the only um, way to, to create, to extend the engine. Another way, I, I was not planning really to do this in this video actually, but let me actually go ahead, create a new Python component here. So create a new Python script if I double click. Uh, so this is a cave component. Um, and what I can do here is select an entity, add this Python component, logic Python component, I can select my Python script and then my component. 
good. And something interesting is that I can actually make this an editor component. And this editor component will have a draw UI. I'm not sure if this is the way to do. I believe it's all our case. Cave.ui.txt. I need to look up in the into the API, but I am actually pretty sure that um well there's where again. Oh I'm reloading, sorry. So I believe it's draw UI hour per case, one second. No, so this is now a good opportunity to actually show you how you can look up this kind of stuff because maybe you're writing your code and you don't know the API, just like me, I forgot this API. So you can click here in help, Cave Engine Python API, it will open locally on your computer so you don't need internet to run this. And this is the entire Python API. And I can actually search here. Uh, you can see I do have a class editor component. I will click here and it will scroll uh, to this place to me. You can see there's a documentation, there's an explanation on how everything works. And you can see, oh, the update interface method. It's not draw UI, it's something different. Good, so I can copy this. Uh, you can see there is an explanation on all, how this works. By the way, you can see all the documentation. It's here, it's local here. You can search, very nice, you can read. So this is how you can access the documentation. So now if I review the script, yes, it is here. So you can see example here. So this is another way to extend the, the engine um, API. The editor, you need to be cautious uh, with the editor components. Don't make everything an editor component because the behavior is a little bit different. Uh, it will try to run the start and the end uh, methods of your component, even without the game running. So make sure you know this, uh, but again, all the explanation, it's, it's fine. Uh, but yes, you can do some crazy stuff like cave. Dot, if cave dot UI. Uh, by the way, you're seeing that now I'm using cave dot UI. The only reason I'm doing this is because, uh, and I was not doing this before, is because um, in the editor tab the UI is registered uh, for you by default. But you can see that both will work here. But anyways, button dark and actually um do stuff and i'll actually try to get the the transform now this is a component this is different by the way and this is why i'm using this for example because the component is attached to an entity necessarily So let's try to see this in action. Let me rebuild the script so you can see I have the do stuff. Let's actually try. You can see that inside my entity itself, now I can have stuff. So I, I've duplicated. Uh, you can see I have the do stuff here. I have the do stuff here as well. Uh, and if I click, of course, I'm resetting the scale, so if the scale is already resetted, I, we're not going to see anything happening. But now if I click here, it will reset my scale. So this is another way to extend the engine API uh, very easily using Python. So yeah, super cool. So that's it for this video, folks. Uh, very nice stuff. And remember, Cave Engine is actually currently 50% off. So make sure you get it um, while you can, because this is a great opportunity. And I'm not sure if this will ever happen again. So make sure you get the link. It will be here in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next time.